I promptly submitted the divorce papers my wife gave me. But then my wife and Mill stunned me. The day my wife handed me the divorce papers felt like a slap I'd never seen coming. We were sitting at the kitchen table in our modest two-bedroom home. The same table where we'd once shared lazy weekend breakfasts and planned for our future. But now, the air was thick with tension and unspoken resentment. I could feel the weight of it pressing down on me, making it hard to breathe. Ethan, my wife, Rachel, said softly, pushing the manila envelope across the table toward me. I think this is for the best. I stared at her for a long moment, my mind unable to catch up with the reality of what was happening. Divorce? We'd had our share of problems, what married couple didn't. But this? This was supposed to be forever. I thought we were just going through a rough patch. A phase. I thought it was something we could fix. Are you serious? I asked, my voice hoarse with disbelief. Rachel didn't meet my eyes. She kept her gaze fixed on the table, her hands folded neatly in her lap. I've thought about it for a long time. She said quietly, and I don't see another way. We've grown apart. Ethan, I don't think we are the same people we were when we got married. There it was, the line people always used when they wanted out. We've grown apart. I hated how cliche it sounded. But in that moment, it hit me hard. I couldn't argue that things had been difficult between us lately. In fact, they've been difficult for a while. We had married young, at 25, and at 32. We were still trying to figure out who we were individually let alone as a couple. She had her career as an interior designer, while I had settled into a comfortable but uninspiring job in finance. Our world seemed to drift in different directions, and I guess I'd been too focused on the daily grind to notice just how far apart we'd gone. But I still loved her. That much hadn't changed for me. Rachel, we can work on this. I said, my voice almost pleading. We can go to counseling. Talk it out, whatever it takes. Just don't do this. She finally looked up at me her expression one of weary resolve. I've already made up my mind. Ethan, it's too late. I couldn't hold back the sinking feeling in my chest as the finality of her words settled over me like a suffocating blanket. I opened the envelope and stared at the stack of divorce papers inside. The terms were reasonable enough. She didn't want to take everything, she just wanted out. I wanted to fight it, to make her see reason. But at the same time, something in me snapped. If she wanted out so badly, maybe I should just let her go. So, without much fanfare, I agreed. I quickly filed the papers the next day, thinking that was the end of it. We'd go through the motions, split our lives down the middle, and eventually, I'd move on. Or at least, that's what I told myself. But I had no idea what was coming next. Rachel wasn't the only one with surprises up her sleeve. A week passed, and the numbness had started to settle in. I threw myself into my work, trying to distract myself from the reality of the impending divorce. Rachel had moved out to stay with her mother, Marie, just until she figured things out. The silence in the house was deafening. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, forgetting for a moment that she wasn't beside me, and then the empty bed would remind me all too quickly of the truth. I hadn't heard much from Rachel during that week. We were in the awkward in-between of knowing the marriage was over but still tied together by the formalities. We hadn't discussed the details of our separation beyond the paperwork and I was trying to mentally prepare myself for what life would be like after the dust settled. That's when I got the call. It was a Saturday afternoon, and I was sitting in the living room, flipping aimlessly through channels on the TV when my phone buzzed. I glanced at the screen and saw Marie's name. I hadn't spoken to my mother-in-law since Rachel handed me the papers. She had always been polite, but I wouldn't exactly say we were close. So, seeing her name pop up on my phone was unexpected. I hesitated for a moment my thumb hovering over the answer button before I finally pressed it. Hello? Ethan, it's Marie, she said, her voice calm but carrying a weight that immediately put me on edge. We need to talk, it's important. I felt a knot form in my stomach. What's going on? Rachel and I would like you to come over to the house. We need to have a conversation in person. My mind immediately went into overdrive, trying to figure out what this could be about. Was Rachel reconsidering the divorce? Was this some last-ditch attempt at reconciliation? Or was this something worse? I'll be there in an hour. I said, my voice steady, though I could feel my pulse quickening. When I arrived at Marie's house, the atmosphere felt off. The house itself was as pristine as ever, with its perfectly manicured lawn and well-decorated interior. But there was an odd tension in the air. Marie greeted me at the door, her face expressionless. But there was something in her eyes, something that made me uneasy. Thank you for coming she said, stepping aside to let me in. 
Rachel was sitting on the couch in the living room, her hands clasped in her lap. She looked nervous, more nervous than I'd ever seen her. Whatever this was, it wasn't going to be a pleasant conversation. I sat down in the armchair across from her, my heart racing in my chest. Marie stood by the doorway, her arms crossed, as if she were the mediator for whatever was about to happen. Rachel? I prompted, my voice a little more strained than I intended. Rachel took a deep breath, glancing at her mother before turning her gaze back to me. There's something I need to tell you. She said quietly, something I didn't tell you before. I felt a chill run down my spine. What was she hiding? She took another deep breath. And then, finally, she spoke. I'm pregnant. The words hit me like a freight train. I blinked, trying to process what she just said. But it didn't make any sense. Pregnant? How could she be pregnant? We hadn't been intimate in months. And besides, we were in the middle of a divorce. That's impossible, I said, shaking my head. We haven't. It's not yours. She interrupted, her voice barely above a whisper. I felt the floor fall out from beneath me. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what she was saying. If it wasn't mine, then whose? Whose is it? I asked, my voice tight, though I wasn't sure I wanted to know the answer. Rachel's eyes filled with tears. And for a moment, she couldn't speak. Marie stepped forward, her expression stern but not unkind. It's not Ethan's fault. Rachel, just tell him. Rachel wiped at her eyes, looking up at me with a mixture of guilt and fear. It's, it's someone I've been seeing. For a few months, the room went silent. I could hear my own heartbeat pounding in my ears as her words sunk in. She had been having an affair. I felt sick. Everything made sense now. The distance. The coldness. The sudden decision to divorce. She'd been cheating on me. And now she was pregnant with another man's child. Why didn't you tell me this before? I asked, my voice shaking with barely contained anger. Why didn't you tell me the truth when you handed me those divorce papers? I didn't know how to tell you. Rachel said, her voice cracking. I didn't want to hurt you any more than I already had. I thought, I thought if I gave you the papers, you'd just let me go. And it would be easier for both of us. Easier? She thought lying to me. Cheating on me and then serving me divorce papers without explaining the full truth would make things easier? I could hardly believe what I was hearing. Marie, who had been standing quietly by the doorway, finally spoke. Rachel should have told you the truth from the beginning. Ethan, but now that you know, we need to figure out where to go from here. I stood up, unable to sit still any longer. I could feel the anger bubbling up inside me, threatening to spill over, but I forced myself to stay calm. What do you mean, where to go from here? She cheated on me. Marie, she's having another man's baby. There's nothing left to figure out. Marie stepped closer, her voice gentle but firm. Rachel is still your wife. Ethan, and this situation is complicated. I know you're hurt, but we need to find a way to navigate this with as little damage as possible. I shook my head, disbelief washing over me. Are you seriously asking me to help her? After everything she's done? Rachel finally stood up, her tears falling freely now. Ethan. I'm so sorry, I never wanted things to end like this. I made a mistake, a huge mistake, but I'm not asking you for anything. I just thought you deserved to know the truth before the divorce was finalized. The truth? She thought telling me now. After all the lies, was some kind of favor? I couldn't even look at her. The betrayal was too deep, too raw. I don't know what you expect from me. I said, my voice cold, but I'm done. I'll sign whatever you need me to sign to finalize the divorce. After that, we're through. I turned to leave, but before I could reach the door, Marie spoke again, her voice soft but commanding. Ethan, wait. I stopped, my hand on the doorknob, but I didn't turn around. I know this is hard, she said, but try to remember the man you've always been, the man who's compassionate, kind, and fair. Rachel made a mistake. Yes, but we don't have to turn this into a war. Let's handle this with grace. Grace? I felt like laughing. But instead, I took a deep breath and turned to face them one last time. I'll handle it, Marie, I said, my voice steady, but that doesn't mean I'll forgive her. In the days that followed, I did what I said I would do. I filed the final paperwork, and Rachel and I quietly dissolved our marriage. There was no big fight, no dramatic court battle, just two people who had once loved each other, now going their separate ways. Rachel gave birth a few months later. I heard through the grapevine that she and the father of the baby had gotten together. Though I didn't care enough to dig into the details, I was focused on moving forward, on reclaiming the parts of myself I'd lost during our marriage. In the end, Marie was right about one thing. I could handle the situation with grace, but that didn't mean I had to forget. 
And as far as I was concerned, I was finally free.